In this video, I'd like to, to look at the architecture behind microservices. We've already seen that a microservice is a small application with a very small footprint that provides some kind of function. It does some functionality. And we've also seen that a microservices architecture is composed of these of several different individual applications. Now, in order for, for a business solution to occur out of these individual services, these individual applications must communicate with each other. They must send messages from one application to another. It is the communication between these applications that create some sort of a business solution. So as in the example here, we could have an account service that talks to an inventory service that talks to some kind of a gateway and then eventually we want to talk to some kind of a sh shipping service. A consumer comes along and the consumer simply wants to know whether a product was shipped or not. So it is a combination of these different individual services talking to each other, communicating with each other that provides that answer to our customer. Now, part of a microservices architecture is the ability to perform modifications. In other words, our system has to change as time changes and as business situations change. Uh, government rules, uh, new, new customers, new parts of the business, the business is expanding. Modifications are part of the life of a software developer. With a microservices architecture, these modifications are done a little bit more efficiently in that the entire system does not have to, have to be shut down in order to have a modification done. These modifications can be done on the fly. In other words, the system continues while the modifications are being done to one particular part of the system. The architecture is organized around business domains. We've mentioned uh, things like sales and inventory, uh, production. So, so our, our business domains drive the microservices architecture. Microservices, in order to, to perform well, have to have smart endpoints. In other words, if I wanted to connect my inventory system to my sales system, then the, both, of those needs, both of those services need to know what the other's endpoints are so that that communication can be smooth and it can be efficient. Now, this, of course, encourages collaboration because if we have one team working on sales and another team working on inventory, these two teams have to collaborate. They have to know what those endpoints, they have to define those endpoints, in other words. Each microservice then has to provide an endpoint. So whether, and usually it's a REST endpoint, but it could be a WSDL endpoint as well. So these are the, micro, uh, the HTTP verbs that could be a GET request, a POST request, request, a DELETE request, and so on. Each microservice has to then let the other services know exactly what that pattern should be so that their request is routed. So usually it is a REST API, and the format of that REST API has to be published to the other teams so they know how to connect to your service. Use of APIs make this communication standard. So once these, all of these different REST APIs are, are defined and they're published, it makes, it makes the entire system more efficient and communication is now standardized. So we know exactly the, the, uh, the routing that needs to take place whenever we connect to another services API. And of course, it's easier for the developers to consume because once they know what the standard is, once they know the, the pattern that, that is required, then it's very easy for them to write the, the, their code to apply to any individual uh, service situation. Now, of course, all of this leads to better development operations or DevOps type of a structure because these various teams, the operations people, as well as the developers now have to talk to each other to sort of sort out the communication standard and sort of develop some kind of structure 
for how these different services are going to communicate. Now, most of the technology used is open source. We are not, we are not obligated to use open source, but most developers will, will tend to use open source.